Hey everybody, it's Blue Toad, and welcome back to Super Mario 64. And I remembered what I was actually going to show last time, which I forgot to do for some reason. But if we just let Mario stand around doing nothing for long enough, eventually... Eventually... It may actually take some time. But... Mario would just go to sleep. And if you wait even longer, even more will happen. But it does take quite a while. Mips is just wondering what's going on at this point. Wait, did they actually remove this? Hang on. It's been like a minute and he hasn't done it. They might have actually removed it in this version. Okay then. So after about a billion years of waiting, basically, Mario talks in his sleep. I, it just, I thought it was removed, but apparently not. You just have to wait literally forever, basically. I think it's around two minutes after he actually just lies on the ground completely. So anyway, we have a few options to do uh, for what to do next, but there are two things that are going to be very important to get away, get get done right away. So let's go have a look at those. Let's go down this, through this door. And if we go up here, this is actually the door that we couldn't get up to because of the slope before, which is kind of pointless, but anyway. It means you can go back around that way if you really need to. But let's go down through this water here. Preferably not dying. Luckily there's water, which means we can just recover all the health we lost before. And now, over here, let's read the sign. Please. Thank you. It is the creed that one shall pound the pillars. Okay. That was a really weird decree, but okay. So there's these two pillars in the water here, and if we can actually stand on top of one for longer than two seconds. If we ground pound, it gets pushed into the ground, and if we ground pound this one, once both of them are pounded into the ground, the water level goes down. If we go back down this way, we can see it's actually gone all the way down over here. The sound effect was way... was here for way too long. Anyway, we can probably backflip or something to get up here. Wall jump is probably good as well. But now this is permanently drained, so we can't use this water for healing anymore. Not that we really needed it. But also this door is available to us now that we can actually stand on the ground. And out here, should be a familiar sight to us, somewhat. Let's go up this path here, and we'll find that this is actually the castle grounds, where we started out, and what we drained was the moat around the castle. Also, there's a sign over here, that, let me just quickly see if this is actually important or not. No, we don't need to, this is the, yeah, this is just telling us stuff we already know. But while we're here, we can also see that there are two coins, or three, two coins, underneath the bridge. I don't even know why you'd need them, or even how to get them. But we also have, if I can change my camera quickly, a cannon out here that we can't get into. Just an interesting detail. And this is also here to teach you how to swim as well, if you didn't learn how to swim in any of the, of the other levels. It's kind of sad to see this little thing out here drained a little bit because it doesn't look good with the walls, but... Oh well. We needed to actually drain the moat. 
one way or another. So let's head back down here very carefully. And if we go all the way over here to where the waterfall is, we can see this is actually still here. And also, this hole over here in the ground. I don't think we could have gone into here before, but now we can. So welcome to the Vanish Cap Switch course. All of the blue blocks you find will become solid once you step on the cap switch. You'll disappear when you put on the Vanish Cap, so you'll be able to elude enemies and walk through many things. Try it out. Unfortunately though, this level here is not really designed to let you keep the wing, the invisible cap for long. Also, you don't take much damage from things, but you'll still take fall damage. But anyway, as we go down this slope, we want to try and get as many of the things along the way. And as you can see, our invisibility has already run out, so we don't even get to keep it any longer. There's also red coins in this level that we need to get, just like the wing cap level get all these one-ups since they're really easy to get. Also, while we're on the topic of one-ups, whenever you um, leave the game, so going back to the main menu and file select, when you go back into your game, you will only have four lives, regardless of how many you've collected or lost. Anyway, there's a blue block here that is transparent, so we can't use that. And there's actually these fire... Um, emitter things. I don't know what to actually call them. But they spew fire at us, and the fire will actually try to tr chase us. So we need to be careful of that. Anyway, over here I believe this box has coins in it, in it for us. And we have to platform with these elevators, unfortunately. Being very careful not to fall off. If you fall off, you will have to... you just get put out over in the water by the waterfall, so... It's not the worst, but it's still very annoying to have to go back through this whole thing. Just gonna backflip off of that before it flips me off. The edge. And then... Oh! Get off, 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 good, good, good. Anyway. That's all eight red coins. There's also a hole in that thing to fall if you need to. Like if you're getting stuck inside of there. But we can't even get inside of that at the moment. So, let's hit this... Uh, invisibility cap switch, or the vanish cap switch. Makes Mario disappear, now the vanish caps will pop from all the blue blocks you find. We can save as well. So, let's use this uh, vanish cap. And it allows us to go through some objects, which means that if we went into this, ob this room we could actually um, die if we didn't get all eight red coins, because otherwise you'd be stuck. If you get all of the coins in here, you get a 1-up. But we did get all eight red coins, so we don't need to fall out. Let's just grab the star. And now that we've actually drained the moat, it's gonna and it's gonna stay like that, we can actually go to the basement a little bit faster by going through this door, but not much faster. You can probably still go the other way. And it will still work out just fine. So anyway, let me jump up like that. Let's go back through this door since it's going to be closer to the rest of the levels that we need to go through. So, there's this big obvious one in the middle that we could do. It's very well known for being a very difficult level. Actually, most of these levels are known for being difficult. But I think I'm going to go this way. And we're going to do this one, because I did say there were two important things we needed to get done before everything else. So let's do this first. Hello, Toad. Hold on to your hat. If you lose it, you'll be injured easily. If you do lose your cap, you'll have to find it in the course where you lost it. Oh boy, it's not looking good for Peach. She's still trapped somewhere inside the walls. Please, Mari, you have to help her. Did you know that there are enemies in what? Enemy worlds inside the walls? Yep, it's true. Bowser's troops are there too. Oh, here, take this. I've been keeping it for you. I didn't realize I could just get this now, but apparently I can. I'm pretty sure Toad normally tells you to go do something else first, but I guess we've already got an extra free star. 
just a little reward for talking to the NPCs that you don't need to talk to, I guess. Course 6, Hazy Maze Cave, Swimming Beast in the Cavern. Well, we're not going to be actually doing that just yet, that particular star at least. So, let's actually uh, see what we have. There's a green box that, that's here that we can't use. And there's also this map here that we can see of the level. We can see the arrows pointing to where we are in it. Very interesting. What does this sign say? Both ways fraught with danger. Watch your feet. Those who can't do the long jump. Tisk tisk. Make your way to the right. Right work elevator hazy maze. Left black hole and the underground lake. Red circle elevator 2. Underground lake. Arrow, you are here. Wow, thanks for telling me where I am even though I've already explained that. I guess it kind of needed to say that. Anyway, this sign tells you how to do the long jump, which we've... Hang on. Yeah, we did read this text already. The long jump is a very important move to learn, so now is a good time to learn it, because we need to long jump over this pit, and if we fall into that pit, we will die. There's also a heart over there that you can long jump to, but I'm going to just go this way, probably instead. There's some enemies that we can just go past. What does this sign say? The black hole. This is where we are. Right is the work elevator and Hazy Maze Cave. Left is the underground lake. Also, this door leads back to the other path, but I don't think I want to go that way. I want to actually stay over here and jump across this. Oh, bad, 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 bad. Oh my goodness, I'm somehow still alive, except I'm also getting hit by boulders. Oh my goodness. Just dodge the boulders, and there are some coins over here that you can collect. Pretty good. Okay. Let's keep moving. There's also a star there, and I'm pretty sure that sign's gonna say about how the map works, which we've already gone over. Let's grab this one up in this box if I can, like that. Just gonna check. Oh wait, it does actually say something different. Down is the underground lake, left is the black hole, right is hazy maze, closed. We can't get through this wall of stuff for that star that's right there, but we can see there's an elevator there, which means we probably need to go using that. Speaking of the elevators, if you just stand on them, they will take you up or down, depending on where they are. In the world, in the level. But anyway, once we're down here, there's a, another green block that we can't use. And also, the underground lake. You can see a star in the middle, that's the star we need to get as the first star in the level. But we're not going to do that just yet, because there's something more important that we need to take care of. So, let's get on to Dory, I believe, is the name of this thing. Or Nessie, depending on what, what you know, I don't know. I don't actually remember which one I grew up knowing, but either one works for me, so. But once we're on top of the head after ground pounding it, well, just, I, I believe you can just get up without ground pounding it, but ground pounding it makes it a lot easier. Depending on which way we're looking, we will go in that direction. So we want to go up here instead of into the middle. And if we just go through here, avoiding the nothing. This thing here should look familiar to us because this was the level entrance for this world. But what's this doing here? Welcome to the Metal Cap Switch course. Once you step on the cap switch, the green blocks will become solid. When you turn your body into metal with metal mar with a metal cap, you can walk underwater. Try it. So yeah, with the metal cap, we can basically be invincible, just taking out enemies by walking into them. And if we step into water, we'll just sink to the bottom. So let's go this way, because if we go the other way, we'll actually reach that edge over there and actually get pulled along with the current. There is a box there, which is just a trap, basically to get you an extra one up. But if you go off the edge, that waterfall there is the waterfall outside the castle. So you get sent back out to the moat, which means you have to do the whole level back to where you are here to get the cap switch and the cap switch red coin star. So let's collect the rest of these red coins. They've only just started collecting apparently. 
And let's just get this cap switch. You've just stepped on the metal cap switch. The metal cap makes Mario invisible. Invincible. <sighs> That's gonna get confusing. Now metal caps will pop out of all, all of the green blocks you find. So I mentioned that you are invincible when you, you, whenever you have the metal cap. We've shown that by walking into enemies to kill them. The only way I can think of to take damage is full damage. But even then I ne never had that problem, so... I can't remember ever dying to fall damage with the metal cap. So anyway, let's just grab these red coins by walking along the bottom of the water here. And let's grab ourselves another star. So there we go, we've had a little small look into Hazy Maze Cave. We didn't get any of the stars there, but we got the Metal Cap Star, which I guess kind of counts as an extra star for that level. But I want to keep looking around at the other levels while we're here. Especially because there's one we haven't even gone to that we could have gone to before going to beat Bowser. Course 7, Lethal Lava Land. Boil the big bully. Don't be a pushover. If anyone tries to shove you around, push back. It's one-on-one -on -one with a fiery finish for the loser. So yeah, we have lava here. If we jump onto it or fall onto it, we'll bounce out, but we'll take damage and be a little bit hard to control. But if we land back on the land, we'll be okay. Most of the time. It's lethal, la lethal lava land. If you catch fire or fall into a pool of flames, you'll be hopping mad, but don't lose your cool. You can still control Mario, just try to keep calm. Okay, and this sign. Running around in circles makes some bad guys roll their eyes. I wonder what that could be a reference to, considering there's an eye on the screen. Anyway, another sign over here. Oh, come on. Hop on the shiny shell and ride whenever you, wherever you want to go. Shred those enemies. Well, that's not going to be a thing that we can do at the moment. But we need to dodge some of the fire in this area. This area, this world, is probably one of the more notoriously hard ones, I guess, for new players. But if you know what you're doing, you're probably going to be alright. Oh, just be careful and you'll be fine. Anyway, this eye here... If we, it sees us, we'll focus on us, and then, after a while, shoot at us. Which can knock us off of things in this world. But if we spin, a, we'll run around it for long enough, it will get confused and give us a blue coin. Also, in the pit that it's guarding, if we stand in there, we will find a warp, which we can use back and forth from standing in the middle of this area. There's also a wing cap here that we can use, so let me just quickly... Oh, it's going into the lava. Oh, it's going off. Ah, oh, there it goes. Well, that's unfortunate. Anyway, let's grab that again. And if we triple jump, we can fly, but not very well. So we're just gonna not worry about that at the moment. And we're gonna head past this puzzle that's shifting around with red coins on it. Also, these bullies here, that's what they're called, will try to push you off the edge. But if you just jump onto them, that's probably the easiest way to knock them off. Otherwise, you can try to punch them off the edge, but that's a lot more work. But it still works the same way. They also drop a coin whenever they fall into the lava, but sometimes the coin doesn't come back out. Oh my goodness. Firebar. Let's just go across this. The platform's going up and down in the lava, which means we need to be careful about that. But here is the big bully. So... Let's try to punch him off the edge, or jump onto him. Jumping onto him is obviously the easier way to do it. I believe you can also ground pound to try and push him, but that also isn't the best. The platforms that spawn whenever you beat him will fall if you stand on them for too long. And I don't... I think they respawn after a little while. But anyway, let's grab the star that he dropped. There we go. Now I might do another star in there just because the next one is fairly similar. 
And also, if you couldn't tell, the red coin star is fairly simple. Bully the bullies. I can do that. But for now... Oh, that was nearly a bad end for me. We need to actually get there. So, let's get rid of you, please. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow, ow. Also, while you're falling from being on fire, is also a good way to push them off, which is funny, because you wouldn't think that would be. Anyway, if we go onto this spinning platform, we have a volcano spewing fire at us, if I wait long enough. There we go. So we probably don't want to stay too near that at the moment. We want to go... Pull, 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 pull. We want to go across this platform here. Oh my goodness, go slow, go slow. Oh, don't do that, don't do that. Jump, 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 jump. Jumping will slow you down a little bit. This box here, if you grab it, will send Mario flying, which is not a good thing. With this lava everywhere going, even if it's going in and out, you still have to worry about that. But when it smashes into the ground, it'll drop coins for you. But if the coins touch the lava, they disappear forever. Okay, get onto this moving platform, which we could have taken from the previous bully. But we need to be on this platform here and take care of these bullies if I don't burn myself. Oh my goodness, okay. Just ground, pound, like that. Oh my goodness, like that. Ground pounding was how I did it when I was growing up. And there we go. For getting rid of the three small bullies, a big bully appears. Oh my goodness. And let's, oh, let's try to push him off the edge. Oh my goodness, please don't, don't, don't. There we go. See? The la being thrown out of the lava is pretty good for pushing them off. Anyway, that's our second star in this level. Here we go. Lethal, Lethal Lava Land isn't a very huge level, but it has a lot of ways to die in it, so... Anyway, now that that's done, I believe... We should head back upstairs, because we saw... Upstairs, before, before beating Bowser, we could have done this before beating Bowser. There was a boo in the back hallway, just next to the stairs. And if you're wondering about that, that is something we can do with. We can chase it, and it goes outside. Literally outside. We have this back garden, I guess. There's a few signs around there. Let me read those. One, if you jump repeatedly and time it right, you'll jump higher and higher. Wow, that's the, the, that's how they triple jump. Two, if you jump into a solid wall, then jump again. When you hit the wall, you can bounce to a higher level using wall kicks. That's stuff we already know. I'm gonna guess this is all just tutorial stuff that they wanted to place around just in case you wanted to reread it. Although that's pretty much everywhere. There's two more signs. Psst, the boos are super shy. If you look them in the eyes, they'll fade away. But if you turn your back, they'll reappear. It's no use to trying to hit them when they're fading away. Instead, sneak up behind them and punch. There's a better way to take care of booze when they're trying to attack you. Press Y while running to do a, a slide attack. That's actually something we haven't done yet. And to stand while sliding, press B or Y. What? Okay, so, if we're running, at, and all that, and we press the attack button... No, that's not it. If we press the... B... Hang on. How do I do this? Is it ZL and then B? No. ZL and then... Yeah, ZL and then Y. As we're running, we actually do a, a slide kick thing. Which is a not very well-known move. But it's a way that you can kick things if you need to, quickly. Now, there's a lot of boos hanging around this place, and if they get too close to us, we can bounce on them, but if we ground pound, that is the most efficient way to take them out, so... I'm gonna guess that this sign over here is not important at all. If you stop, press CL to crouch, then jump, you can perform a backwards with somersault. Yes, okay. Anyway, you can see what the boos drop whenever they are invisible, which is usually just coins, but this big one over here... If I can get it to stop chasing me. 
has some kind of cage inside of it. So if we can ground pound it to defeat it, it drops the cage and if we get close, we get pulled in. Course 5, Big Boo's Haunt. We could have done this before beating Bowser, like played this entire course probably, but there are a few things that you need from later on to actually complete it. So, go on a ghost hunt. Let's do it. Come on in. Here. Heh heh heh. Okay. There's a lot of signs. Oh my goodness. Let me just quickly grab this box, which we've already seen in Lethal Lava, Lava Land. This is kind of a way to introduce yourself to it if you didn't just go to um, Lethal Lava Land first. Let's read this sign here. This is probably going to give me directions. Running around in circles makes the ba some bad guys roll their eyes. That's... we we did that. I guess I needed to explain that again because there's an eye in that house if we went into it. The vanish cap is inside the blue block. Mr... R.A. will be surprised when... Uh, since you'll be invisible when I... when you wear, wear it. Even the big boo will be fooled and you can walk through secret walls too. Okay. Interesting. You don't stand a ghost of a chance in this house. If you walk out of here, you deserve a ghoul medal. Oh my goodness, the puns. It's wonderful. Psst, the boos are super shy. Okay, we read this. Okay. Let's go in. So welcome to the Haunted Mansion, I guess. If we walk around here, there's a red coin back here, I believe. But also this piano is gonna try and attack you. With its teeth. Let's just go past that for now. Also, some objects in this mansion will come alive and try to throw themselves at you to, to kill you. This is not great. But if we stand on this platform, or standing looking away from the painting here, of the boo. Two boos will come out and we can kill them. Ghosts don't die. Hehehe. <laughs> can you get out of here alive? Normally whenever you kill one of those boos it will give you the text but because we killed two of them at the same time it doesn't give us the whole text. Anyway let's grab this vanish cap. We can actually go through this painting into the back room. We could actually have gone through this door by going all the way around the mansion and going in. But we can just go through the painting to see it. And we don't even need to go through the painting if the boos go through, so. Anyway, I believe uh, by, by one of these bookshelves, a books will pop out which will try to hurt you. But if you ground pound, you can just kill it for a blue coin, which is useful. Anyway, let's keep moving. That's that side done. Now in here, we have another one of those eye monsters. I don't actually know what they're called. I believe I, I learned what they're called at one point, but I forgot. Ghost don't die. Thank you for telling me again. Now if I can get this eye to actually see me, you need to not be moving too fast for it to not see you. I, I guess I'll just take that out. Because I can. And let's move on to the next room. Now... These pits could be a problem. Also, this bridge breaks if you're staying on it too long. If you go through one of the pits, you end up down here. In this little underground basement. We can go through this room, which has a... Uh, which is moving floor. I don't know what to call it. The merry-go-round, I believe that's what it's called. We can go through and then end up on the other side. Otherwise, we can just go around the side... There's the water over there. And just go through here. And we could have gone down here before, going a different way. Because we're going the direction you'd usually come from. There's an elevator here that's going to take us back up. And... Once we actually get back to the surface level. There's another eye here, but I'm going to just ignore it. This house here, which I mentioned before we could go in, is right at the front. So, you probably don't want to fall down because it's a lot of backtracking to get back, so... It's funny how the words make sense when you 
understand them. Anyway, if we run across this bit here, we can take out another boo. Since we're going on a ghost hunt. Ghosts don't die, hair hair. Can you get out of here alive? And this is the last room in the house. Oh, that boo's gonna get in my way. I'm gonna try and punch it if I can. I don't think I can. Although I think I can also... Oh, I can also bounce it back if I need to. And then ground pound. Boom! Here comes the master of mischief. The Tower of Terror. The Big Boo. Kahaha. <laughs> For killing all of the boos around this house and going back to the main room through the store a big boo has appeared so we can go around it and even dive into it to do damage otherwise ground pounds will work and I believe how punching it and all that oh my goodness don't die anyway you just need to hit it three times and a star will appear upstairs there's no way to get up there yet but for killing him these stairs also appear which will become just... They will just stay like that whenever you re-enter the level. Except I believe if you select the first star again. So any other star you select will be fine, as long as you've collected the first star. So yeah, that's Big Boo's Haunt. Guess I'm gonna leave that for now then. Now we have 25 stars, which is almost what we need to actually go to the next Bowser level. But we haven't actually done all of the, um, we haven't actually checked out all of the new levels yet. So let's head back downstairs. And, I believe, possibly, nope, okay, we're good. If we go down this path, over to this dead end, if you get nice and close to it, it makes a rippling effect, just like the rest of the paintings. The toads did say that the walls had levels in them. Course 8. Shifting Sandland. In the talons of the big bird. This level is also quite easy to die in. You see this sand here? If you touch it, you will instantly die. Basically. There's another one of these jumping boxes here. And some enemies around the place. This para... Or Fly Guy, I believe they're actually called. If you just jump on top of him, he'll make you spin for a bit. Oh my goodness. I believe you can touch this sand for a little bit and there's a life on top of it, but we don't need it. If you jump on top of a Fly Guy, you'll get... You'll, you'll be spinning, which will make you a bit floaty and all that. This Pokey here obviously hurts you if you touch it because it's a mo moving cactus. But if you punch it, you'll just take it out. You can also kick it as well and jump on top of it to kill it. And it drops a blue coin whenever you do. Some Goombas here. Just gonna go past them. Another Pokey. I'm just gonna ignore that one. And now... Watch out, don't let yourself get be swallowed by quicksand. If you sink into the sand, you won't be able to jump. And if your head goes under, you'll be smothered. The dark areas are bottomless pits. So yeah, this is more quicksand that we can't go into, otherwise we will die instantly. Basically is what that's saying. We've also got this block here that will crush us. I don't think it instantly kills, but it will do a lot of damage to us. But you can see that one part of it has a hole in it that we can stand in the middle of to not get crushed. If you remember where they don't... Uh, whenever they... If you remember where the hole's gonna land, you can probably get past these fairly easily. But anyway... Oh, this is not good. This is not good at all. Okay, this is fine, I guess. Let's just go across here, and now we're at the other end of the level. There's a pink bubble on here, that we can probably talk to. I'll prepare the cannon for you, because there is a cannon across the map, basically. But that's also in the, uh, the section we just passed. So we want to be careful around there. And now, this bird that's been flying around, this vulture, I believe, is almost able to touch up here, but it's carrying a star as well. Oh my goodness, there it goes. The vulture is carrying a star and it's almost close enough to touch. So, if we can get any closer, if we can touch it, 
it drops the star. But now, whenever you go back into the level and not select the first star, the Vulture will steal Mario's cap. Which means that Mario will take extra damage whenever he's hit. So you don't want to lose your cap. If you lose your cap and you leave the level, you have to go back and get it. You don't get it back. And I think you don't even... You might get it back on a game over, but I don't... Can't confirm that. It's the same way to get it back as you got the star. You just need to touch it again to get him to drop it and then pick it up. But you really just want to avoid that for now. So thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all next time.